Three women. Three modern hip hop legends. Each of them has brought something new to the game. All have fierce individuality and ferocious ambition. In a genre previously only dominated by men, these badass women have flexed their skills and come out on top. Join us as we look through Nicki Minaj's colorful rap career, Lizzo's self-love anthems, and Cardi B's unexpected rise. This is Women in Hip Hop. The first star barely needs an introduction. She is an innovator in switching from perky pop princess to gritty gangster rapper. We are of course talking about Nicki Minaj. Nicki Minaj has indelibly changed the landscape for artists in hip hop for the past decade. She is a ferocious MC who's just as comfortable being the girl next door, glammed up Barbie doll, or rambunctious alter ego, Roman Zelansky. Throughout her many incarnations, the tenacity and hunger that fueled her ascendance to the top have not changed. Even at the top of hip hop, her passion for being the best remains the same. It's a lot of pressure. You don't wanna let anybody down, you know, so people put so much in, in you, into you, it's kind of like investing into a stock. So it's like, you don't wanna let, you don't wanna cause them to lose. Born Onika Tanya Mirage in the Caribbean, her father is Robert Mirage, who worked as a financial executive. Her mother, Carol Mirage, was a foreign exchange teller and gospel singer. Her parents immigrated to the United States when Minaj was very young. I, I'm, first of all, I'm a proud immigrant. And I came to America, when I came to America, shout out to my country, Trinidad. When I came to America, I wanted to see America. I thought I'd be living in this big castle. But unfortunately, my mother, you know, didn't really, my parents didn't have it like that. So, you know, humble beginnings. Minaj attended the world-renowned LaGuardia High School and had a keen ear for music from an early age. Determined to make it in the music business, Minaj took on backup singing roles for New York rappers. She was eventually discovered by the Dirty Money CEO, Fendi, who came across Minaj's MySpace page, loved what he heard, and signed her to his label. That connection led Minaj to Lil Wayne, who collaborated with her on a series of mixtapes, the first of which, Playtime Is Over, was released in April 2007. This and subsequent mixtapes, including Sucker Free in 2008 and Beam Me Up Scotty in 2009, showcased Minaj's female swagger and out front style. In 2009, she signed with Lil Wayne's label, Young Money Entertainment, becoming its first ever female artist. After her collection of mixtapes caught the eye of Lil Wayne's label in 2009, Minaj went on to collaborate with stars like Ariana Grande, Kanye West, Drake, Beyonce, Rihanna, and Britney Spears. Let me get this straight, babe. I ain't never geek, but my features in my show 10 times your 
Following a critically acclaimed feature on Kanye West's song, Monster, Minaj released her first single, Massive Attack, in 2010. Her debut studio album, Pink Friday, was released that November and promoted with eight singles from it. First album I had Eminem, Kanye West, Rihanna, right. Lil Wayne, Will I Am. Who, who does that on their first album? No one, you know? So people are like expecting me now to get, you know, Jesus Lord Savior. Yeah. <laughs> it went triple platinum and received generally positive reviews. Moment for Life was released as the fourth single from Pink Friday shortly after the album's release, followed by the internationally successful single Super Bass. This one is for the boys with the booming system. Top town AC with the cooling system. When he come up in the club, he be blazing up. Got stacks on deck like he's saving up. And he ill, he real, he might got a deal. He pop bottles and he got the right kind of bill. He cold, he dope, he might sell coke. He always in the air, but he never fly coke. He a motherfucking drip, drip, seller or the strip, strip. When he make a drip, drip, kiss him on a lip, lip. That's the kind of dude I was looking for. And yes, you get slapped. With an addictive pre-chorus and hook, Super Bass got audiences familiar with the colorful nature of Minaj's rapping and singing ultimately paving the way for the dance pop direction she would later embark on. I, but I think from the outside, when people don't get to know me and they don't know how layered I am and they don't really know my music and they just see someone that's dressing, you know, crazy, they think, oh, you're this one or you're that Well, you're trying to be this one, but I'm just doing me. Minaj reached a natural audience with her 2012 Super Bowl appearance. She performed alongside Madonna in the game's popular halftime show. Soon after the appearance, Minaj released the album Pink Friday, Roman Reloaded. The record proved to be a smash hit, reaching the top of the pop, R&B, and rap charts. The infectious dance song Starships was the first breakout single. I think it's, it's like a billion times better than my first album, and it's just because I'm more confident, and you know, I, I didn't really, I just went for it. I didn't, I didn't change stuff. I didn't, you know, go crazy and redo my verses a billion times. I was just like, you know what? This is who I am right now. Take it or leave it. For the Reloaded tour in October, oh my God, it's just bigger, 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 bigger. Um, obviously, we're gonna, you know, it's gonna, the set is gonna be on steroids. The, all of the um, things that I that I love but when I go and see a tour. The lights and the, and the, um, the, the backdrops and the video contents and, you know, the dancers. If you want to do what I do, I work very, very hard. And um, I love to make my Barb's, aka my babies, happy. Eight more singles were released from her next album, The Pink Print, which was released in December 2014. The album's star studded guest list included Beyonce, Chris Brown, Ariana Grande, and Drake. It went double platinum, and in 2016, she won the Best Female Hip Hop Artist Award at the BET Awards for the seventh consecutive time. A novelty track by Minaj's own admission, Anaconda is still spoken about to this day, thanks to Minaj's full throttle commitment to the Size Matters ethos of Sir Mix-a-Lot's 1992 track, Baby Got Back. Anaconda was released in August as the second single, peaking at number two on the Billboard Hot 100, becoming her highest charting single in the U.S. to date. Minaj re-emerged in April 2018 with two back-to-back -back singles, Chun Li and Barbie Tings, giving a taste of her forthcoming album, Queen. Oh, I 
get it. <laughs> they painted me out to be the bad guy. When is the last time you're gonna see a bad guy do the rap game like me? Although the artist promised her fans that more music would come, she took a step forward fulfilling her family desires by tying the knot with boyfriend Kenneth Petty in October 2019. In July 2020, she announced that she and Petty were expecting. They welcomed their first son in September 2020. Since the release of Queen, Nikki has consistently collaborated with other artists on hit songs. American rapper Doja Cat featured Minaj on two remixes of her song, Say So. That week, the remix topped Billboard Hot 100, becoming Minaj's first single to reach number one on the chart. It also marked the first time that a song by two female rap artists reached the top, which paved the way for other female rap artists' collaborations. Shout out to all of the kick-ass women, not only in this room, but all around the world, who, you know what, we win and fail in the public eye. And that's not easy to do. People think they know what, what it requires. People think they could do it. Everybody wants to walk in your shoes until you put them in your shoes, and then it's like, oh, you know what I mean? So I wanna, I wanna say congratulations to all the girls in this world who are strong, who are confident, and yes, we have insecure moments, and that's okay. But guess what? You do something that millions of people would never be able to do if they had the opportunity, because it takes guts, it takes balls. In a full circle moment, 2021 saw Minaj release a reissue of one of her first mixtapes, Beam Me Up Scotty. The reissue introduced her early work to a much larger audience. It let the public see both how far she has come and also her undeniable talent from day one. In 2022, Minaj released her hit single, Super Freaky Girl, sampling Rick James's 1981 song, Super Freak. Hey girl, I can lick it, I can ride it while you slip it and slide it. I can do all them little tricks and keep the dick up inside it. You can smack it, you can grip it, you can go down and kiss it. And every time he leave me long, he always tell me he miss it. He wanna Super Freaky Girl feels like a companion song to Anaconda, driving the fans wild as a result. The song debuted at number one in the U.S., becoming the first solo song by a female rapper to debut at number one in the U.S. in 22 years. As of 2023, Minaj is working on her much-anticipated fifth studio album, she described it as fun, gutter, and back to the basics. Known as one of the most legendary artists in the rap industry, Nicki Minaj has dominated the genre for years. She has topped lists as one of the most influential people globally and has had singles make it onto the Billboard Hot 100 on numerous occasions. Minaj is often called the queen of rap. She has been nominated for 10 Grammys throughout her decade-long career, earned a Guinness World Record in 2017 for most Billboard Hot 100 entries by a solo female artist, and achieved an outstanding five MTV Video Music Awards. Her career opened the door for many other women looking to make a career in the rap game. Next up is a star who is completely irreplaceable. Pop singer, rapper, body positivity icon, Lizzo is an American superstar 
whose feel-good music has captured a mass following. With lyrics talking about race, sexuality, and body confidence, she has garnered fans worldwide and keeps hitting the top of the charts. I can sit up and say, oh, I make self-love music. That don't mean shit unless somebody actually learns to love themselves while playing your song. Before making her mark in rap and pop, the three-time Grammy Award winner was on track to become an orchestral flutist. Even after changing musical direction, Lizzo has continued to play the flute, and it's become her signature in her songs and live performances. Her journey from classical to rap to number one billboard artist and her difficult metamorphosis after stepping into her power and confidence are nothing short of inspiring. Born Melissa Vivian Jefferson in Detroit, Michigan on April 27, 1988, Lizzo grew up with two other siblings in a deeply religious household. Her parents were middle-class entrepreneurs running their own businesses. They were heavily involved in their church and encouraged their daughter to perform gospel music at a young age. At age 10, Lizzo started playing the flute, an instrument she became devoted to, and eventually played in her school marching band. Though the flute was her focus, she also began writing rhymes as a teenager and rapping, forming the group Corn Row Click with her friends when she was 14. Around this time, she picked up the name Lizzo, a cross between Lissa and Jay-Z's song, Izzo. While in college, Lizzo continued to rap and perform in shows, in addition to hours of flute practice. But by her junior year, she dropped out of school before completing her bachelor's degree to focus on making a name in the music industry. There, she had no backup plans but to make it in entertainment. Throughout her young adult life, she started bands like Girl Party and Chalice, an all-female music trio. After gaining some attention and collaborating with Laser Beak and Ryan Olsen, Lizzo released her first album, Lizzo Bangers, in 2013 on an independent label. Featuring 14 songs, Lizzo Bangers reflected her upbringing and her years in Minneapolis's hip-hop and indie music scenes, and as time went on, her style became more wide-ranging and melodic. The album's gritty sound was a major critical and commercial success, earning Lizzo local and national acclaim, and she toured the U.S. and the U.K. after its release. She was also named one of the artists to look forward to in 2014 by Time Magazine. Following the success of her debut studio album and her promotional tour, she started working on her sophomore album in 2013. She then worked with Laserbeak again to produce her second album, Big Girl, Small World which arrived in 2015 and included the song, Batches and Cookies. The set of 12 songs borrowed from classic and contemporary hip hop and R&B. Many of her songs were about her personal experience and the stigma related to being a black and plus size woman. This resonated with listeners and she flourished even more.
In 2016, following a move to Los Angeles, Lizzo released her first major label solo EP, Coconut Oil 2016, in which she added more gospel to and featured the singles Worship and Good as Hell and emphasized the themes of body positivity and self-love. Atlantic Records, they really taken care of me and they from the day I walked in that building, I met everyone from the top to the bottom and they've really worked hard for me and I've worked hard for them. So this is just a payoff. I'm about to drink some champagne and have fun and just make sure that next year I'm in the building as a nominee and a winner. And a winner. <laughs> Lizzo's late teens and early 20s were marred by low self-esteem, worsened by a toxic lover's desire for a thin girlfriend when she was just 19. She would feel ugly without any makeup and would spend her first 20 years wishing she would wake up as another girl. But a reversal of fortunes was just around the corner. The rules that I enjoy breaking, I mean, I just feel like everything I do kind of breaks the rules because we, we had like five of them, you know, and I don't exist within any of those parameters. So I am the broken rule. <laughs> I don't care what people appreciate about me. I appreciate myself. Lizzo returned with her third album, Cause I Love You. And she learned that the darkest days can turn into the greatest triumph. Well, it's definitely recognition of, um, you know, your impact oh, this year, in this past year. And um, for me, it was really cool to be like, oh, I was impactful. Not only did I put out a good album, but I really showed the world who I was this year and the world really fell in love with who that person was. So I think that's what it means to me. It's not like the best new artist that just came out because I've been doing it forever, but it's like the best new artist to the world. Like who was that fresh face that the world got to see this year? And I'm one of them. So it's really special. Rumors was the first single Lizzo had put out since 2019. Featuring Cardi B, it came out in August of 2021. Yeah. Unfortunately, the release unleashed negative comments on social media, which Lizzo described as fatphobic, racist, and hurtful. However, the single still topped the Billboard R&B chart and reached number four on the Hot 100. At the festival, I'm really excited to have Lizzo. She is such a nonconformist and has been rewarded for that with a number one single. Everybody sees how amazing she is, again, doing her own thing. I love Lizzo, for instance, because she's just so genuinely confident and she like raises a lot of awareness. In July 2022, she released her fourth album, Special, which became the highest charting album of her career and featured the hit single, About Damn Time. Produced by a creative team, the record found Lizzo exploring love in all its aspects. From her efforts, she has delivered countless anthems and motivational quotes to keep her fans on the track toward better body positivity. On Instagram, She's become one of the most influential people to follow, embracing her beauty, normalizing dimples, lumps, as well as stretch marks. I want you to know that whatever you're going through, if it doesn't feel good, that you will feel good again. And 
you have you have whatever it takes to feel good again you are capable you deserve to feel good as hell even her flute named after beyonce's sasha fierce alter ego has its own instagram account with hundreds of thousands of followers in april 2022 Lizzo launched her own shapewear brand, Yiddy, in collaboration with Fabletics. The inclusive line is described as no shame, smile-inducing shapewear with sizes ranging from 6X to extra small. In May of 2022, the sight of Lizzo in a Tom Brown outfit would have been eventful on its own but she brought it to the next level when she climbed up the gala red carpet with an impromptu flute performance. Back in her early 20s, young Lizzo faced a life of emptiness, self-hatred, and self-loathing. In February 2020, she was Rolling Stone's cover star radiating confidence. She knew she had to change and she chose to live. Today, she exudes confidence, joy, and beauty and has now become a role model for body positivity, self-love, and empowerment. She reminds everyone that loving yourself should never be a choice, but a decision born out of necessity. You are beautiful, you can do anything is her mantra. Although the charismatic and inspiring Grammy-winning singer says she doesn't want to be seen as brave for her body, rather she wants to be celebrated for her music. When it comes to self-love, body confidence, and general sassiness, Lizzo reigns supreme. As she continues to make a positive impact in the world, all eyes are now on her. Both a Lizzo collaborator and Nicki Minaj rival, Cardi B has quickly become one of the most famous artists of the last decade. Despite being a regular degula schmegula girl from the Bronx, she became one of the most influential female artists of all time. Her hustle from rags to riches has been inspiring. In 1992, Belcalis Almanzar was born, the daughter of a Dominican father and Trinidadian mother. Belcalis was raised in the High Bridge neighborhood of the South Bronx. She spent much of her time at her paternal grandmother's home in Washington Heights. The South Bronx is known for its hip hop culture and graffiti. In the early 1970s, graffiti became popular in the Bronx spreading through the New York City subway system. The Bronx then became musically notable as hip hop music, rap, and other creative components became standard within the community. Belcalis developed the stage name Cardi B, a derivation of Bacardi, her former nickname. Cardi B is said she was a gang member with the Bloods in her youth. However, she has stated she would not encourage anyone into joining a gang. When she was fired from her part-time job and faced poverty and an abusive relationship, 
she turned to stripping and had talked openly about her pride at this decision. Cardi B stated that stripping saved her from many things and even gave her the ability to go back to school. People always told her she was going to be famous because she had a big personality and liked to perform and dance. When you're a kid, you create dreams of your life as an adult. She didn't want to live by a dream. She wanted her dreams to be her reality. In 2013, she began to gain publicity as several of her videos started spreading on social media platforms, such as Vine and Instagram. A remix of Shaggy's song, Boom Boom, marked Cardi B's debut on the music scene. In 2015, Cardi B became a regular cast member on VH1's reality series, Love & Hip Hop, New York. But I'm just a regular, degular, schmegular girl from the Bronx. I be dancing all around America, hosting all around America. And my goal is to make that money and turn everything up. Ain't no party like a Cardi B party. Like, you know I got that party popping. When it comes to my personal life, you know, sometimes I be in my feelings, but then I get reminded, ooh, I got to pay my bills. So, you know, I get right in my bag and I hit the quan on these cats, you heard? <laughs> I let these goofy cats know. Jezebel considered her the breakout star of the show's sixth season due to her wild and original personality. She left the show in 2017 after two seasons to further pursue a career in music. The year 2017 promised even bigger opportunities. Not only did she release her second mixtape, but she also broke into the music industry with her first major label deal through Atlantic Records. As she continues her tour schedule, Cardi B is being recognized as a rising star, nominated at the 2017 BET Awards under the Best New Artist and Best Female Hip Hop Artist categories. In August 2017, Cardi B released her commercial debut single, Bodak Yellow. It became a viral hit, eventually earning the top spot on the Billboard Hot 100, the Hot R&B and Hip Hop Songs chart, and turning triple platinum. With Bodak Yellow, rap history was made since the last female solo rapper to achieve this feat was Lauryn Hill in 1998 with Doo Wop That Thing. Her brash confidence and distinctive personality ooze forth from the track. It's fun, filled with quotable lyrics, and is one of those songs that will have the club going crazy at 1 a.m. Along with her BET Award nominations, Cardi B received two Grammy nominations in 2017 for Best Rap Performance and Best Rap Song. What, what I'm most excited to see on the, on the Grammy Sunday is just like me hopefully winning an award. Like, what else? Like, that's all I think about, to be honest. I don't think about nobody else but me or the Migos winning. She performed her collaboration, Finesse, with Bruno Mars during the 2018 show. I want to perform, oh yes, we trippin' and finesse, okay? 
It don't make no sense. Drop the top porch, rolling on my wrist. Diamonds up and down my chain. She garnered eight nominations for the 2018 Billboard Music Award before taking home the top rap female artist win. In April 2018, Cardi B unveiled her long-awaited debut studio album, Invasion of Privacy. Along with tracks already familiar to fans, the album included collaborations with Migos and 21 Savage. Invasion of Privacy was already eligible for a gold certification by the time of its release, thanks to the earlier success of Bodak Yellow. With the reality TV background, there was no surprise when she made her film debut in Hustlers in 2019 alongside stars including Jennifer Lopez, Constance Wu, Lily Reinhardt, and many more. Her role in the show can be seen as an homage to where she came from to where she is now. Always proud of her journey. By September 2019, Cardi B became the highest certified female rapper of all time on the RIAA's Top Artist Digital Singles ranking with 31.5 million certified units, also making her the ninth highest certified female artist overall. She was the most streamed female rapper of 2019 in the US, according to Spotify. Consequence of Sound deemed her one of the most formidable hip-hop artists of the decade. Although female artists have made huge strides within the world of hip-hop, many still find it challenging to be in the male-dominated industry. Even Cardi B, one of the most commercially and critically successful rappers in the game, has dealt with this kind of pressure. She commented that female rappers have to work hard on their performances, great visuals, hours of makeup, pressure by the public to look perfect, make great music, and yet are the most disrespected. This, of course, isn't the first time Cardi B has touched on the unique problems facing women hip hop artists. But I do know that women in the community, like what I went through, or like what I go through, like I know some women that, that they wanted to be video vixens, that they wanted to be um, the girls on the music videos. And there's always that guy, that one plug, they always be like, oh yeah, you wanna do this? And they always try to bribe you with like, you know, sleeping with them. And it's just not even, not even just that. Like in any, I feel like any workplace, like I feel like sometimes men try to bribe you to get that big position that you really want. When it's just like, why do, why do women gotta deal with that? You know what I'm saying? During a 2020 interview with Billboard, she spoke about the relentless pressure she and others meet to churn out hit records at a rapid fire pace. Cardi B has had some big moments on the internet over her career. However, very few things will top the cultural disruption that WAP created. August 2020, Cardi B released the single WAP, featuring American rapper Megan Thee Stallion as the lead single off her forthcoming second studio album. In it, Cardi B and Megan rap explicitly about their sexual encounters. Like I'm surprised, that's role play. I wear the skies. I want you to park that big Mac truck right in this little garage. Make me dream, make a stream. I don't public, make the scene. I don't cook, I don't clean. But let Aye. me tell you, I got Aye. this ring. Gobble me, swallow me, drip down inside of me. Quit yeah. jump out for you, let it get inside of me. I tell them where to put it, never tell them where I'm about to be. I run down on them for I have a night. Running me, talk your pal, bite your lip. Ask for a call while you ride that dick. Why you really ain't never got him for a thing. He already made his mind up before he came. Now get your boots, hang your coat, fuck this way. Each of the featured rappers traded witty, sexual, empowering, and playful bars filled with innuendos. A pivotal single for both artists, WAP 
is just another example of how women dominated hip hop in 2020. Critics hailed it a sex positive triumph, applauding the women for being unruffled by respectability politics and slut shaming. Cardi B is best loved for her wild personality, individual sound, and passion for current affairs. She is unapologetically herself and is celebrated by her fans as keeping it real on and off the stage. These three women each excel at what they do. Each have individually changed hip hop and shaped the wider culture in some way. They bring humor, self empowerment, and of course, catchy rhymes to the music business. Fans all around the world cannot wait to see what these women in hip hop do next.